Hi, my name is Bedina and I'm the Education Officer at the History House here in Armadale. Welcome to part two of these um, Anzac films that we're doing. And in this section of the film, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what it was like during the time of the war for the people that were still left at home. And I've got a couple of different items here that I'm going to use to help tell that story. The first one is this sewing machine here. This sewing machine is actually a German-made sewing machine, but it was a machine that was used at around the time of, of the war to make a lot of items that were needed by the soldiers on the front line or by the nurses in the hospitals. So local groups of women would get together and sew sheets for, for hospital beds, bandages that could be used to, to um, help with the soldiers. Uh, they would be darning a lot of socks, knitting a lot of scarves. And this is an example of some of the socks that could have been made. Now, these are not original pieces. These are just examples of uh, socks that could have been darned by um, the women that were at home at the time. Now, darning is a skill that's not that well known now, but they made these beautiful woolen socks. And when a soldier enlisted in the war, he would receive three of these pairs of socks as part of his initial war kit. Now, the local women in Armadale were quite an active group um, and they sewed more than 28,000 items, as, such as the sheets and the um, socks, scarves, mittens, all of those sorts of necessary items. They were also very active in fundraising and they raised over £7,000 which is about equivalent to $72,000 today. Um, and this money all went towards buying extra little items like chocolate, tobacco, that kind of thing that they could pack into the care package and send off to the front lines for their soldiers. So that's what the women did. Now, the children were also very involved at home. They had all sorts of chores to do. They would help their mums with these kind of jobs. But you need to remember back in the early 1900s, that this whole Armadale area was farmland. So the children would need to carry out a lot of the chores that their big brothers or fathers who'd all gone to war were no longer there to do. So things like picking the fruit, milking the cows, uh, doing the fencing, ensuring just that the farm continued to run. The children would be quite heavily involved in those sorts of chores. Quite different to what children need to do today. Now, as the war was going on, um, word came back to the Armadale people that their local boys were also dying on the battlefield. Um, this would have been traumatic for them and already in 1916, remember the war didn't finish until 1918, already in 1916 they decided that they were going to build a monument in honour of the soldiers that lost their lives. What we have right here are the original panels of the monument that was built in Armadale. Now we have that brick obelisk still in Memorial Park here in Armadale. Um, that was first unveiled in 1916. These are the original panels. The panels that are on there now have been um, upgraded to, to include a complete list of all the soldiers that have lost their lives in the various battles um, across history now, not just World War One. We have another object here to help us tell a little bit of a story there. This is a commemorative trowel that was um, given to Marion Cullen. And Marion Cullen was the lady that was chosen to lay the very first brick of the monument that we have here in Armadale. Um, the reason that our monument is made of brick is because the brickworks around Armdale and Byford at the time were very active and they were able to donate the bricks to this monument so that it could actually be built in the war times. The very last thing I'd like to quickly show you is this program. Now there are so many different ways that we remember and honour the soldiers and nurses that went to fight for our freedom, whether they lost their lives or came home, they made huge sacrifices. And one of the ways that this is done is by commemorating Anzac Day, which we do on the 25th of April every single year. 
This program comes from the second ever held Anzac Day in Armidale in 1921. So the very first one was in 1920, exactly 100 years ago this year. And we can see on this program um, the extent of what they did. Now the, the program does show you that most of the events were held in the afternoon, not like the dawn service as we remember it today. So there's a few things that do show us how we commemorate Anzac Day. There's a few uh, more things that I would like to encourage you to look at. If you follow the links on this that are connected to this video, you'll see an online exhibition that gives a bit more detail about some of the ways that we remember here in Armadale and some of the information. And also a support document that will give you a lot of ideas of what you could do at home, either to do further research or just your own little ways of remembering how to make a poppy or Anzac biscuits or something similar to that that will help us to commemorate. We need to remember these kinds of events in our lives, not only so that we don't repeat the past mistakes that have been made in society, but also so that we can understand how society, how communities rally together to, to really fight or to combat these major events that happened in their lives. And we can learn from that today because we also are faced with all sorts of different major events. Hopefully get to see you one day in History House. Thank you very much.